Hey, <laughs> welcome to day two of the 31 Days of Tarot Challenge. Um, this challenge is hosted by Ethany at ethany.com. Um, yeah, she's a fabulous tarot reader. I'm loving everything she does. All of her posts and videos are amazing. Go check her out if you haven't heard of her already. Um, 31 Days of Tarot is for anyone, anyone who wants to participate. Um, your challenge is to create a video every day for the whole month of January. So day two. And today's topic is my five um, top tarot decks of 2016. So we can be a little flexible. Obviously, I didn't buy... Well, maybe not obviously, but I did not end up buying uh, five brand new decks that were all published this year. So I can't give you an honest review, but I can talk about, uh, I did buy one. Um, that one will get first mention, The Dreams of Gaia, the book, Dreams of Gaia um, Tarot, which is absolutely amazing. Um, it's my most anticipated bought it right away because I knew it was coming out for the last probably couple years and so that release date I was on it um, couldn't wait to get my hands on this and it's not disappoint it is a fabulous tarot deck it's got a little bit of criticism because it is an entirely new system it breaks from your traditional tarot meanings completely so uh, it's a bit of time investment if you want to learn this deck but this is a deck I'm absolutely in love with I use regularly and I will probably continue uh, to use it in the future. i big fan. So Dreams of Gaia was top of my list because it did come out this year and it is one that I absolutely love and will continue to use. So my next two decks um, have been around for a while but they are probably the other two tarot decks that I use most this year and of course my um, Shadowscapes. Shadowscapes Tarot. Um, this comes with me everywhere. Um, it's always it's always with me. I love this deck because of, well, I'm a huge fan of the artist Stephanie Law. Um, it's also full of fairies and mermaids and dragons. It has a lot of Celtic and Asian folklore woven into it. Um, so that's been an inspiration behind the images. Yep. I absolutely love this deck. It's you can already see after um, one year, <laughs> the edges are all wearing out. I'm probably gonna have to replace this deck in the next couple of years because it'll be just completely frayed and worn out. Um, yeah, and surprising, I'm surprised that I'm adding this to my list, but I have found that I have used it this year more so than my Morgan Greer, which is really weird because if you ask me which one I prefer, I say, oh, I would much rather use Morgan Greer, but I have been picking up um, my Universal Weight decks, and probably because my Morgan Greer is at the office and this one is at home. So if I want to use it at home, this is the one that's handy and it's the one I use. So this is kind of going back to my roots, my very first deck. Um, your kind of standard traditional Rider Waite Smith. This is the Universal Weight Edition. Um, okay, so those are the big decks that I have used this year. Um, I haven't really added any new ones to my collection that I use on a regular basis and none that have come out this year, but I, there are three decks that have caught my attention this year, and I don't know if I'm going to go out and buy them or not, but they are on my radar, and they have kind of piqued a curiosity within me. And so those are the Line Strider Tarot deck. I'll put links in the notes below so that if you want to check them out, you can go ahead and do that. Line Strider, the artwork um, kind of appealed to me as an artist. I'm not sure if it appeals to me as a tarot reader. Um, I know it's been a popular deck, um, but it hasn't quite persuaded me to go out and buy it yet, but I am kind of on it. I've been checking it out on Instagram and just kind of feeling it out a little bit, um, but it has, yeah, it has 
piqued my interest, but I think the artwork is quite beautiful. I just not sure if it uh, appeals to me as a card reader. Um, the other one is the Chicoli uh, Tarot, and that, out of the three I'm going to mention, that one is probably the most likely that I would actually go out and buy and actually use. I love the illustrations. It's kind of right up, it's in my taste of artwork, that kind of fantasy surrealism that I like. Um, yeah, check out, I'll put the link below, Chicoli Tarot. It just came out this year, um, and I might end up purchasing that one. And the third, I know I'm now, I'm, I'm over five, I'm talking about six, but I feel like I have to, as a tarot reader, have to mention this one because it's all you see <laughs> online these days if you're looking uh, for tarot readers and tarot readings, especially on Instagram. It's just exploded. It is one of the best-selling tarot decks of 2016 so I feel obligated to mention it and that is the wild unknown tarot. Um, I kind of want to get my hands on one just to see what all the buzz is about uh, but the images just are not resonating with me as a tarot reader at all. I just I don't know what it is but maybe it's just the writing of the book. It's kind of like another Osho Zen you're familiar with that one that was a hugely popular one among tarot readers and it just I don't know for it just didn't appeal to me I don't know I'm the I'm the black sheep I guess so yeah I'll put all those uh links in the notes below so if you want to check them out go check out those those decks if you have your favorite deck what was kind of the top on your list what what out of all the decks in 2016 that came out this year was there one that um, you went out and bought or one that you added to your wish list or which deck did you use the most this year? Let me know in the comments below and I will see you tomorrow for day three. Ciao!